Welcome. Today we're going to be working on an effective stresses example. For this, we have a soil profile that is shown here in the figure in which the groundwater table is located, is located at 5 meter depth. We have four soil layers. We have number one, number two, number three, and number four. For each layer, we have soil properties which include layer thickness 5, 4, 4, 3 for a total of 16 meters, and the unit weight of each soil layer. Now, as for the questions, we have part A. We are asked to calculate the total stress, pore water pressure, and effective stresses at the bottom of each layer. Then we're asked to draw the stress distribution diagram here. And for question C, we're required to estimate the change in effective stresses when the groundwater table rises 2.5 meters above the surface. And for fin the final question D, we are as we are asked the same: the change in effective stresses in the groundwater table, both when the groundwater table is lowered to three meters below its original level. So if it initially is at five meters, as we can see here, when the groundwater table lowers to eight meters in depth. Please note that for solving this problem we're going to be working with a water unit weight of 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter. I'm going to proceed now with the solution of the problem. So for the solution in part A first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a table which we're going to include uh, different information about the soil. So we get started first with the depth. It's going to be in meters. Then we're going to be talking about the thickness of each layer again in meters. Then the unit weight of each layer which are described in kilonewton per cubic meter in this problem. Then we're going to have the effective stresses which is going to be in kPa. So we're working in kilonewton per cubic meter so that will produce kilonewton per square meter which is equivalent to kPa. So it's the same thing. Then for the pore water pressure again kPa. And finally for the effective stresses, we have the same units, kPa. Now, look at each of these layers. We have the properties that we need here. So we have, we're going to start at the surface, zero meters. So that means we have no thickness, no unit weight. So there is no total stress, no pore water pressure, or no effective stress. Now, we go down to five meters. We have a unit weight of 16.23, so 5 meters thickness, 16.23 kilonewton per cubic meter. Then we go down 4 more meters to the second layer, that is 9 meters, 4. And then we have a unit weight of 17.11. Go down to 13 meters, that was 4 more meters here. And then we have a unit weight of 15.49. And finally, go down to 16 meters, thickness of 3, and we have a unit weight of 19.02. Now, we continue then the calculation of the total stresses here. So let's write it down here. Total stress. Now we're going to go by layer, so at 5 meters depth, we get 
that the vertical total stress is equal to the unit weight of soil 1 times the thickness of that layer so from here we get 16.23 kilonewton per cubic meter multiplied by 5 meters thickness we get you can, you can use your own calculator at this point to check the calculations we get that this would be 81.15 kPa okay so come here and we write it 81.15 right so and that is in kPa now we go to the next layer which would be nine meters here so at nine meters we get so this let's call this for one so the total stress at layer two would be the vertical stress at layer one plus the unit weight of layer two and the depth and the thickness of layer two so notice that what we're doing is we are accounting for this value down here and these two values there and this will produce the result here so black again we got this would be 81.15 kPa plus 17.11 kilonewton cubic meter times 4 meters okay and this means that the vertical stress the second layer would be let's see here 149.59 kPa so please do check these calculations by yourself it's best practice you can have And then we continue in the same way. So at next one would be 13 meters. So the vertical three is the vertical total stress is two plus the thickness at three multiply sorry the unit weight at three and times the thickness of three so this would be 149.59 kPa plus 15 apologies let me compress this a little bit here for you so you would have better look at it so vertical stress at two plus the unit weight at 3 times the thickness of 3 so 149.59 kPa plus 15.49 kilonewton per cubic meter times again 4 meters for the third layer that means that the vertical effective stress at the third layer sorry the vertical total stress at the third layer would be 211.55 kPa we come up here write it again 211.55 and finally at 16 meters the vertical total stress at the bottom of layer 4 is equal to the vertical total stress at layer at the bottom of layer 3 plus unit weight times thickness of layer 4 so this is 211.55 kPa plus let's get this 19.02 kilonewton per cubic meter times 3 meters and this brings us to the 
total at the bottom of the soil profile of 268 times so 0.61 kPa so 268.61 so we have the first column now please note that I always took the total stress at the bottom of the previous layer and I multiplied the unit weight of the layer we're working on times the thickness of the layer. Now we're gonna move on to calculate the pore water pressure in the in soil profile. So let's put it here. Pore water pressure. No. Remember but that for this condition we're gonna have the groundwater table at a depth of five meters at the bottom of the first layer. In this case, we're gonna consider hydrostatic conditions. Hence, we can calculate the pore water pressure as a hydrostatic pressure, just as, as you learn in your fluid mechanic modules. So basically, at the bottom of each layer, the pore water pressure is equal to the head of water above it. Now remember that we have the ground water table at 5.0 meters depth. So let's get started in the same way as we've been doing. At 5 meters, we have the pore water pressure is equal to the unit weight of water. 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter times we have the depth of we're calculating 5 meters minus the depth of the groundwater table which is 5 meters so in this case we have no pore water pressure which is expected as that would be the phreatic level remember the phreatic level is the level at which the piezometric pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure so in this case 5 meters so we have 0 kPa of pore water pressure at that depth now we move on to 9 meters so pore water pressure again 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter my apologies there 9 meters minus 5 meters equals to 39.24 kPa so we come here 39.24 we go again at 13 meters for the third layer pressure equal to 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter 13 meters minus 5 meters equals to 78.48 kPa so if it up 78.48 and the last one 16 meters at 16 meters power pressure is equal to 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter 16 meters minus 5 meters it's 107.9 91 kPa okay so 107.91 so we have filled up <coughs> the column for the pore water pressure and the column for total stress now for final one we're gonna have 
the effective stresses. Now for the effective stresses effective stresses we have to recall that the effective stress is equal to total stress minus the pore water pressure. So we're going to be using that principle so very simple at 5 meters again we have that the vertical effective stress at 5 meters is 81.15 minus 0 so I can actually fill it up here now 81.15 so come down I'm just going to write it down for you here so we have 81 point 15 kPa minus 0 0.00 kPa and just using two decimal points here for consistency so we have 81.15 kPa at 9 meters for a meter below we have that the vertical effective stress is going to be again 149.59 minus 39.5 24 I'm sorry for for the quick scrolling here so we have 149.59 kPa minus 39.24 kPa that is 110.35 so we write it here 110.35 one, then we go again total stress minus pro water pressure to 11.55 minus 17.48 so at 13 meters total effective stress sorry it's total minus pore water pressure that would be 211.55 kPa minus 78.48 kPa and this would be 133.07 kPa I actually just noticed a mistake in the previous one here so I'm going to correct the units are kPa my apologies then at the bottom at 16 meters we have the same so 133.07 for 13 133.07 and finally 268.61 minus 107.92 one kPa so we have 268.61 kPa minus 107.91 kPa that would be equal to 160.70 kPa so we come here 160.70 I don't need to put the KPA here because they're up there so finally we fill the table now we have in this table all the information about total stress, power pressure and effective stress I, I really like this format because you can see everything in one go now for part B remember that we're asked to draw the stress distribution diagram so that is these diagrams total stress pore water pressure and effective stress that is actually very very common and it's very good to, to draw them so you can see the variation with depth um, because I don't have a kind of graph paper attached here I have prepared for you this stress 
distribution diagrams in in a spreadsheet and I'm gonna just paste it here and we're gonna be discussing them so let me just put them here for you so you can see them now you can see here that let me just put here I have the total stress the first one pour water pressure in the second one and the effective stress for the last one effective stress now I have added an additional one but I'll, I'll discuss that in a minute so for total stress you can see the variation with depth it's sort of straight now there is there's small variations there because the unit weight of the material changes so as it changes there's there's a drop here you can see this one comes pretty much straight and then drops down now that can be attributed to changing this so we have that this is 16.23 this is 17.11 so it's pretty similar but there's a slight drop here so there's a drop in total stress but then it picks up again when it becomes 19.02 I think it was so that's what it looks sort of straight but there's little changes as each layer changes in the unit weight unlike the pour water pressure because the pour water pressure will have the same unit weight for material which is 9.81 that's pour water pressure of water kilonewton per cubic meter so there's no pour water pressure here as we have no groundwater table down to up down to five meters so at that point is where it starts to grow and it goes straight down to 16 meters now remember that the effective stress is this minus this so you can see as the groundwater uh, appears there is a big drop in the effective stresses remember these are the stresses in between the grains so you can see there how it changes now I draw this last one because I I, I kind of want to show in the same diagram the total stress in the dash orange line and the effective stress in the black um, continuous line you can see here how the pore water pressure drops total stress to the effective stress in the same amount so that is what I want to show in this one but these are the three that were asked for in this problem continuing on to question C we are asked to calculate the change it's important change in effective stresses if the groundwater table rises 2.5 meters above the ground surface so come here and say C change in effective stress when Round water table rises to 2.5 meters above surface, right? So this would look something like this. We have the ground surface here, and we have our layers our surface and our layer here and our layer here let's take this the five meters layer one of four meters another one of four meters another one of three meters but in this case the ground water surface rows to a point 2.5 meters 
above the surface. So this is this would be the, the new groundwater table, right? In order to solve this problem, we need to prepare another table, just like the one we prepare here. For question A, then we calculate the effective stress, and then prepare the second table, or we're going to prepare a second table in which we're, we're going to compare the initial groundwater table. Uh, sorry, the initial effective stress calculating A and the new effective stress after the groundwater table has risen. 2.5 meters above the ground surface. So we have depth here and we have 0, 5, 9, 13, and 16. Then we have our thickness again in meters then we're gonna get the unit weight in kilonewton per cubic meter we're gonna get the total vertical stress in kPa kilopascals the pore water pressure again in kilopascals and lastly, we're going to get the vertical effective stress in kilopascals. Now, the differences are here in thickness, because we know that from 0 to 5, we have 5 meters. From 5 to 9, we have the same 4 meters. From 9 to 13, the same 4 meters. And from 13 to 16, we have the 3 same meters. However, we're gonna say that because the groundwater table rose to 2.5 meters above the surface, so we're gonna get a, at a depth of zero. So at the surface, we're gonna get a thickness of 2.5 meters. We can effectively say that because that surface is submerged under 2.5 meters of water, and the unit weight there would be the unit weight of water. That's the layer that it has. 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter. Now the other ones wouldn't change and uh, we're going to just copy them again 16.23 and 17.11 those are the first two so 16.23 17.11 then the other ones were 15.49 and 19.02 okay so 15.49 and 19.02 so we're gonna start with the process in the same way in this occasion I'm not gonna be writing the calculations I'm gonna be making just have the calculator here and you can follow them up as well by yourself you, I recommend that you all do them by hand in the process. So we can say that at the surface we're gonna have a total stress of 2.5 times times 9.81 which means we have 24.53 total stress. Then remember that we're gonna take this one and the multiplication of these two to get next value and we keep going in the same way so 24.53 plus 5 times 16.23 that's a total stress of 105.68 then the next one is 105.68 plus 4 times 17.11 that is a total stress of 174 Point twelve, then one hundred seventy-five point twelve plus four times fifteen point forty-nine, two hundred and thirty-six point zero eight, and finally for total stress, two hundred thirty-six point zero eight plus three times nineteen point zero two, that is two hundred ninety-three point. 
14. Now, as you can see, the process is the same, it doesn't change. Again, it's the same for poor water pressure. And finally, the effective stress is the subtraction of the total stress minus poor water pressure. So we're going to move on to the next column. And we have that because the first layer, it's only water. So the hydrostatic pressure actually starts at the surface of the water again. So we're going to get the same 2.5 times 9.81, so 24.53 for the pore water pressure. And the next one, it's at a depth of 5, but because the layer of water is 2.5 meter above the surface, so we're going to get a head of water of 7.5. So we're going to get 7.5 times 9.81, 73.58, then we keep going, 7.5 plus 4 it's 11.5, so we're going to get uh, times 9.81, 112.82, at the next level it will be 152.06 and finally 16 plus 2.5 it's 18.5 times 9.81 181.49 okay now what we do for the effective stress it will start the subtraction of this so as you can see the effective stress at the surface will be 0 0.00 there is no effective stress at the surface and we keep going the same way and here we're gonna get 32.10 at 9 it's 174 minus 174.12 uh, 174 minus 112.82 we'll get 61.10 30 at 13 meters we're gonna get 84.02 and at 16 meters we're gonna get 111 my apologies 111.65 so as you can see the calculation of the effective stress doesn't really change what we're going to be doing now to estimate the change in effective stress due to the rise of the groundwater table is to a smaller table here it's it's very easy to make i'm just going to do the the table for comparison at all, at all depths so we're going to get depth in meters and again zero five nine thirteen and sixteen and then we're gonna get what we call the initial effective stress in kpa which comes from part a and the final the final effective stress again in KPA and the difference between them will provide me with the change in the effective stress so let's do this one first 0 0.00, .00 32 10 was it? Yes. Then at 9 is 61.30. Then at 13 is 84.02. And finally at 16 meters is 111.65. Now 
Okay, maybe we can get it from here. So 18.15 and 110.35. Just gonna take them down here. 133.07. 160.7. So here we have that at the surface obviously it's going to be 0 0.00 then we have 81 110.35 Zero seven and one hundred and sixty point seventy. Now, if we calculate the difference between these two values, we are gonna get. Let's let's pick any of them randomly. So let's let's do the sixty meters. That is one 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 point. 65 minus 160.70 we are gonna get a change in effective stress of minus 49.05 now if you do that for all the depths you're gonna get the same result bar at the surface in which the effective stress doesn't change because it's zero at all moments. So we're gonna get here minus 49.05 which comes from difference of 32.10 minus 81.15 and that is the effect that the rise of the ground water table has on the effective stress at all depths okay now in this case the effective stress is affected in all of them because there is a rise in the groundwater table finally we're gonna go and look into question D and question D similar to question C ask for the change in effective stress but in this case the groundwater table has been lowered to three meters below the original level so I'm gonna follow the same procedure we're gonna do a little bit of a drawing of the new condition so D groundwater table lowered three meters below original level remember the original level was five meters uh, at a depth of five meters so in this case we're gonna have the groundwater table at eight meters before below the surface so again we draw each of the layers We have five meters, four meters, four meters, and three meters. But in this case, the groundwater table, which was originally at this depth, it's somewhere along these lines here. So, groundwater table, in this case, it's eight meters. Okay, so we're gonna proceed to build a table equal to the one in question A and question C as this one here. So table like this in which we're gonna be calculating the effective stress and then we're gonna be doing another table like this to compare the change in effective stresses. So again, we're gonna have depth 
in meters we're gonna have thickness in meters we're gonna have the unit weight in kilonewton per cubic meter we are gonna have the total vertical stress in kilopascals for water pressure in kilopascals and finally effective stress again in kPa so we have 0, 5, 9, 13 and 16 now in this case because the groundwater table was lowered so again there is no thickness at the surface there is no unit weight and hence the total stress is 0, 0.00 or pressure again is 0, 0.00 and the effective stress would then be 0, 0.00 now we have that at 5 meters the thickness is 5 at 9 meters it's 4 then another 4 meters here finally again another 13 meters remember that we have we already have all the unit weights I'm just going to transcribe them here it's 16.23 17.11 drops here to 15.49 and we have the final layer has a unit weight of 19. Point 0 to kilonewton per cubic meter. We start with the same procedure again. Remember the total stress from the above plus thickness plus the new one plus the, the, the unit weight here. So we have that 0 plus 5 times 16.23 will be 81.15 we move on then to the next one 81.15 plus 4 times 17.11 is 149.59 at 13 meter is 149.59 plus 4 times 15.49 which brings us to 211.55 and then for the final layer is 211.55 plus 3 times 19.02 which comes to 268.61 kilopascals okay now the change really it's going to be here in the pore water pressure as you can see Question A, the total stresses here are the same because there wasn't an addition or, or anything, just the total stress doesn't really change in this case. In question C, it did change slightly and that is because of the rise of the groundwater table above the surface so there was a slight change in total stress but in this condition because the groundwater table was just lower the total stress doesn't change the only change really happens in the pore water pressure so let's see how the water pressure changes remember now the new depth of the groundwater table in this case is 8 meters so at 5 meters there won't be any ground water table so this doesn't really change so the effective stress really becomes 81.15 okay however because the ground water table, table changes slightly I am going to recall how we did the calculation remember just did the unit weight of water times the head of water in this case because the groundwater table is changed to 5 
from 5 sorry to 8 I'm going to be changing this to 8 so in this case it will be 9.81 times 9 minus 8 which is 1 so it just becomes 9.81 and then we move on in the same way again I'm not going to be writing that so you can do it by yourself there but procedure is that one so we have in this case 49.05 because we are 13 minus 8 times 9.81 and for the last one we have 78.48 so the effective stress will now be the subtraction of these values so we get 149.59 minus 9.81 we get 100 39.78 to 11.55 minus 49.05 is 162.50 and 268.61 minus 78.48 we have 190.13 okay so that is the effective stress when the groundwater table is lowered to 8 meters now into how do we know the change in effective stress so we're going to build a table just like this one in which we get these same values for the initial effective stress but the new values are the ones we get when the groundwater table is lowered so let's see depth in meters and again we have 0, 5, 9, 13 and 16 that's not a great 6 then we have The initial vertical effective stress in kilopascals, and then we have the final vertical effective stress again in kilopascals, and we get the change in the vertical effective stress in the same kilopascal units. So we have 0.00. .00 0.00 in this case this one there's no change because there is no effective stress there here we're gonna have 81 169.78 162.50 190.13 the original values were 81.15 and 110.35 so 81.15 and 110.35 then we get 133.07 and 160.70 33.07 and 160.70 so we're gonna get again do the same calculation the final effective stress minus the initial effective stress so let's at 5 meters you see there is no change in effective stress we'll come back to that one in a minute but all of the other ones we're gonna get 139.78 minus 110.35 that is an increase in the effective stress of 29.43 and if you do the same for all the other ones you're going to get the same value of an increase of 29.43 no. it's very interesting to see here that for question C when the groundwater table rose from 5 to 2.5 meters above the surface there was a significant drop of 
0.05 in the effective stress whilst when the groundwater table was lowered from 5 to 8 meters there was an increase. And why is this? Because as the, there is a rise in the head of water the pressure tries to separate the particles increases so the effective stress reduces but when this head of water is actually lowered from its original level the effective stress all the stresses that go to the pore water actually are transferred into the interparticle contacts and that is why we get the increase now look at the original level didn't have any effect at any change in the effective stress and that is because at part a the initial condition in this case the groundwater table was at that point so there was no poor water pressure and that is why we get no change because there was no poor water pressure there initially and when the water table is lowered then there's still no water pressure at that point I hope this has been useful for you, thank you for, for listening, goodbye.